I'm a hopeless romantic. I'm a soul singer, innit? I mean, that's what we do, innit? We're always whinging about love all the time. That's what we do. I mean, I'm a walking disaster. so frightening to have a voice in the first place. Everyone's always going on, oh, you're so lucky, you've got this really great talent. But it's different when you didn't hone the talent. I was born with it, you know, I didn't go to a school to acquire it. It was always there. For me, music should be something that takes you away from the harshness of life, you know? So the more romantic, the better. I love singing about love. Love never gets boring. My upbringing was very much like a typical Caribbean house. My, my, you know, my family are from Jamaica. Um, my grandmother had a lot of children. Um, and then she took my mum's kids and we're all living in this big, big, big house. It was a bit like um, the Waltons. It was like that. <laughs> a Caribbean version of the Waltons. Um, we'd, we'd have our, our own concerts. You know, we'd have like talcum powder bottles and we'd use that as microphones, you know. And we, we you know, there was just a lot going on. And my aunts and uncles are classically trained pianists as well. So they would always be rehearsing constantly. Every day it was, you know, every day. And the funny thing was I would be ad-libbing to a lot of the things they were playing. So even when they were playing, I don't know, Mozart or whoever it was, um, I'd be humming along to it. So I got a really good ear for music from being really young because I was exposed to that. But it was church gospel music which most influenced Misha's vocals and gave her a taste for performance. Like many gospel fans, Misha watched gospel greats like the American Hawkins singers when they toured Britain. My grandfather was a minister. We had choir practice, Bible study, and, you know, it was a full-on thing. Full on. I want you to slip your hands up to heaven and we're going to just quietly and reverently just sing that praise to the Lord. Everybody singing with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gospel music is very much about touching people and not about self-glorification. So it's not at all like pop music in that way. Hallelujah. The first time I ever um, sang in church, my grandmother um, had said to me that she was having a couple of guests come down to church that Sunday and she wanted me to learn a song. I was really scared because I remember they called me out and I remember I, mean, I must have had my little socks on and, you know, the whole thing. And I walked out there and my knees were really shaking and I just couldn't control my knees. I stood there and I started singing the song and then all of a sudden my knees stopped shaking, you know, and it started to feel good. And then everyone was getting really excited, you know, and... The song started to really touch people. I could see, the more that I could see them feeling what I was singing, I, I sang more and I started to try and, and even hold the notes a little bit longer and I was really going there. I started to feel a, a feeling of, just a wonderful feeling from singing. Everyone just jumped up after I finished and started clapping and said, we want to do it, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then, and I just went, Oh, OK, I'll do it again then. So I did it again and that's where it all started. At the age of 10, Misha was regularly touring Pentecostal churches, singing her heart out. Four years later, she entered the National New Testament Gospel Competition. If you ever see the numbers of people that go to New Testament on a UK scale, it's just, they, they could fill Wembley. It's so many people. So if you can imagine singing at 14 in front of all these people in a size you know, the, the hall is the size of, like, you know, Wembley. It was just like, you know, that's how it felt. It was just so frightening <laughs> because it was just so many people. They were like ants. And um, I made it to the finals. And I learnt this other song by the Hawkins again called He's That Kind of Friend. And I... 
I did that song in the competition and I couldn't believe it. The crowd just went mental and then um, I won the award. If you ever need a friend that sticks closer than any brother I recommend Jesus Because he is that kind of friend He'll walk right in front of you To always protect you So the devil do a bit more and then um, I met these four other people we made a group together called the Spirit of Watts and um, I was ready to do gospel concerts now not just sing in churches I wanted to do proper concerts and then we started to get noticed so you better the attention was not just from fans the Spirit of Watts were noticed by a record company who arranged for the group to record a demo it was my very first time that I'd ever gone into a studio, like a proper studio like this, you know. And I was just blown away by the desk and the, the whole thing. And I was just like, yeah, this is where I'm going to be. This is, this is, this, I like this place. This is great. The rest of the Spirit of What's the group, they weren't happy because basically it was, they could feel that it wasn't going to be a gospel thing, you know what I mean? And the, the, I started to get sort of, a feeling from the record people that they were really just only interested in me, you know, not really interested in them. I'm coming up to 16 now and I'm like, I don't, I don't really want to do gospel anymore. I'm, I just want to do, I want to do other music now. Misha turned to the music she'd heard as a child. Not the gospel of her grandfather's church, but the soul music played in her dad's car. When my dad would pick us up at the weekends and my mum and everything, 
we'd go off at the weekends and my dad would have on Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson and he'd have Curtis Mayfield playing in the car um, and the Isley Brothers, you know, he would have all these great records playing in the car and I just, when I would get in the car I would just lose it because I was just like, oh man, this is amazing, this music because I felt starved, you know, because um, even though gospel music is amazing and I love gospel music but when I heard that music it was like I really 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 like this you know what I mean my love is strong you see I know you'll never get tired of me oh baby and now I'm gonna use every trick in the book I'll try my best to get you hooked hey baby Ross provided Misha with musical inspiration. She had the most amazing tone and she was probably one of our first beautiful icons, black icons. Um, she was able to transcend colour. Misha hadn't turned 18 when she was offered a recording contract with Island Records and started rubbing shoulders with her musical heroes. When I walked into Island Records, I felt like, this is it, this is where I want to be. You know, I was waiting in the reception and saw Bono walk, walk past and uh, saw um, Grace Jones and Sly and Robbie and just... Courtney Pine and just all these great people and I was just like oh, this is really where I need to be and what was great about Island Records well, it, it was it was an ethnic environment it was multicultural it was I saw reflections of myself I saw my Jamaican roots in there I saw the English the Irish the whole it was just all it was a melting pot of just incredible people Yeah, that was great, working with Courtney Pine on Like Dreamers Do. I ran up to him and I was like, I really love you, I think you're really good, and I, I, really, I really like to work with you, you know. And uh, he's, um, he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. He came in the studio and he just played, and my God, when this guy played that, I just lost it. I wanted it to have that kind of feel like, you know, back in the old days, you know, classy, like, you know, the Gene Kelly movies, and I wanted that kind of look, and uh, I think we achieved it in the video. At the time, I was going clubbing a lot and stuff like that, and when I saw these three guys dancing in a club one day, I was just like, oh, we've got to get these guys on the video, man.
Coming up in part two, Misha battles to regain control of her career and copes with the loss of her younger brother. <laughs>